What is going on, my dears? I'm excited. I'm in a channel today. I'm really excited. I connected with an Egyptian version of myself that I have not seen or connected to in a really long time. And it's super quantum. It's not really a past life tale because she exists. And so I'm excited. I'm going to channel it today. I brought Madame Isma for the for the pause we're going to, or actually I'm not even going to do a pause today. Actually, we have to because we need our coffee and our tea. This is my at-home cocktail tray, and I've already had my espresso for the morning, and I'm having some Earl Grey tea, have some warm water. How are you doing? What's new? Oh my gosh, I know. It's, I'm going to put the link below for the relationships are drastically changing video. Um, it's... There is so much change. There are, you know, relationships or breakups, people coming together, soul tribe is getting stronger, but it's confusing AF out there. It's Pisces season. And I'm just gonna sit in my chair as I get ready. And so it's a lot, it's a lot. And there's a lot of people that are leaving the planet as well. And that's really intense. It's really intense, the amount of people that are leaving the planet right now. So I just have to offer love, condolences, whatever it is that you're going through, support. Just know that you're not alone. Just know that you're not alone. It's a big wave, big wave. So um, please go grab your coffee or tea. Actually, I'll introduce myself first and a little bit of the intention of the video today. So hello, my name is Sarah. I'm a quantum healer. Spirit Council, a raconteur, um, what else, what other titles do I have? Leader, leadership coach um, in my human life, I'm a waiter. I wear many different hats and I usually pop up in your life when you've been repeating similar patterns, you're trying to make sense of all the spiritual, the woo-woo, the jargon and things like that. And I kind of give leadership and spirituality a handshake and kind of help you bridge the gap between you know, you're running your life, you're running your business, you are homeschooling, you are taking care of yourself. And so sometimes all you have to do is just put my videos on in the background. It's really just you and I at this cafe table. It's my multidimensional cafe. And it's just you and I having coffee. We're chit-chatting about woo, we're chit-chatting about quantum life. And so my intention for today is to channel a little bit. This is something I do in my quantum healing sessions and my channeling sessions, whereas we invite your guides in and they speak through me. If it is in person, we do you know hands-on Reiki healing and we talk as that's happening, as I'm talking and channeling. And if that's over Zoom Zoom, then we talk it out. I speak, your guides speak through me. I talk to them, you ask questions, all these different things. And so one thing that's really happening right now in it's March 2024 as I record this in this current time and space is that a piece of music or a documentary in this case something will trigger a specific opening inside of yourself and you'll get all of these downloads I'm going to explain all of this I'm going to explain all of this so I'll say it in the spiritual sense, and then I'll say it in the leadership sense, and then I'll bridge the gap. So in the spiritual sense, you can listen to a song. I was watching a documentary on ancient aliens, and all of a sudden you get these downloads, this whoosh, this woo, this, this kundalini awakening, this whole thing where you have this view in front of you that says, oh my God, I know it's just integrated. It's just integrated. Think of the matrix download, like and you just know it. It's that effortless, it's that easy. I was having a phone call with a dear friend yesterday and she was just our synergy of communication. She was getting downloads upon downloads. The, she had a specific song that she listened to a few times and was getting downloads upon downloads. And so after that connection, later on the day, I'll speak from the leadership sense, going for a drive or you have this moment of clarity where all of a sudden the path the steps one two three just makes sense you've put everything onto the vision board you understand where it is that you're going you have the full view of the final compelling vision tony robbins compelling vision and then one day you're like oh, i get steps one two three i get the idea i get what it is the next program the next thing that i want to create it's coming in hot right now it's coming in hot so with all that being said, 
I was watching a documentary on the aliens. And I had this version of me that I haven't seen since 2021 when I first started channeling. And it's, I had wrote, I have tried to write this down so many times where I wrote Egyptian priestess, Egyptian goddess, and she was like Egyptian woman. It was just being an Egyptian woman. And this was during a time where the Anunnaki were there, where the reptilians were there, and everyone was just coexisting. It was Egyptian days, Egyptian time, where there was no, yeah, you would just see these beings walking around and nobody batted an eye. And so I wanna bring her into channel because as I was watching it, usually I get up and I stop and I drop and I just like sit in a trance and I record it and it's just for me. But as I was, this was in the end of the evening, it was like my my later on the Sunday type of a movie that I was watching. She said, I'm going to give you downloads as you sleep. We're gonna do the healing as you sleep, but this isn't meant for just you. This is for you to record, to channel, and then offer to your community. So that was so exciting. And because my concern is like, am I gonna lose it? Am I gonna miss it? Do I need to do it right now? And she's like, you relax, you enjoy yourself. I'm really trying to be cognizant of my Sundays and just sink into having a Sunday and not respond to emails and not, and just have those boundaries. Because as entrepreneurs, you could work every second of every day, truly. And that is going against my energy type. It's going against everything it is about being a projector, being a 33 life bat number, like all the different things that make Sarah, Sarah, it doesn't work, I just, I just burn out. So, however much my Capricorn moon wants me to do things every second of every day, I just can't, I just can't. So now we can do the pause. Use the Madame Esme, just go grab your coffee or tea. You don't need a journal, I don't think. If you want one, I always have mine with me, but pause the video. Go get your things. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to invite I'm going to invite this Egyptian woman, a version of me, to come in. And what I had written down, there was a timeline where humans and aliens just coexisted. And whatever whatever belief system you have about the origins of you know, our galactic heritage, whatever foundation that you have, this is a quantum view. So this is a, think of it as a disco ball or a fly's eye view, where this is one fractal of one view of one possible thing that in the quantum world, if you get it, whereas that is, yes, that is true, that is fully there, and then someone else's opinion of that exact same thing, but that's just like a little bit off, is their timeline, is their view, is exactly it. Both are most authentic. I know that this is a lot, but this is quantum stuff. And just like I said, it's you and me having coffee. So just watch this, and then as you sleep, let it integrate. Because sometimes the gargantuanness of the quantum multiverse is so much for our little brains to comprehend. So we just have to trust in the process and trust in the vibrations. I think that made sense. Okie dokie. So this is just, I'm, I don't have to explain. It's just the way that I do things. So the way that I'll describe her, she's wearing, there's like gold bands around her head. Gold like kind of looks like the way that the elves in Lord of the Rings, for lack of a better term, there's like gold around her head, like this little crown. Which is specific, she's saying. There's... There was so much she doesn't want me to talk about because really my brain is going to the the why it split off, why the things happened and why the timeline had to go and why we had to become, you know, slaves and why why the whole thing had to happen. And she's like, don't focus on that. She's like, focus on where I am, which is everyone is coexisting. And there's aliens, there's greys, there's blue palladians, there's Arcturians, there's Anunnaki, there's reptilians, and there's humans. And everyone's coexisting. Whatever happens, whatever way that humans were made is not relevant right now. Whatever happens 
experienced then is not relevant. Whatever happened afterwards is not relevant. She's like, we're just looking at where I am, what is happening and how I'm communicating and why I'm here to talk to the humans that you have that, that come to your stage there. She said, this was an option. There was a moment where everyone could have chosen the timeline where aliens and humans and everyone, it was just a magical timeline. There was that option. That was a whole view. They're saying Mandela effects. They're saying that that is so, she's showing me that as a Mandela effect, but that that timeline is actually the more, okay, I'm trying to put it into human terms. So she's showing me that that was the highest timeline and that still is the highest timeline where everyone coexists and there's no manipulation. But the fact that we had to go onto this timeline, the one that we're on right now in March, 2024, is because we all wanted to quantum leap together. We wanted to bridge the gap from the lowest timeline to the highest timeline, just as humans are the amalgamation of the lowest density beings as well as God consciousness together as one. It's part of the prophecy. What we're experiencing had to happen for the prophecy to happen. And we're going to be, she's showing me that was the lowest timeline and then there's the highest timeline. And now she's flipping it to be a Venn diagram where both are happening at the same time. And then she's showing it from above saying, you can't tell which is the highest and which is the lowest when you view it from above, it's just the timeline. So why now? Why March 2024? Why are we experiencing so much right now? She's saying the light, the sun, the solar activity is a really big part of what's going on. And it needed to happen in a way that people would let it integrate because sometimes doing the work in the human... She's saying the human collective wanted to be very efficient in their processes. And some people, the mystics and the spiritual awakened ones right now, wanted to do it in a very hands-on way to experience and to teach others what it is that they went through. But then there's a whole another collective of human beings that this is happening vibrationally. And they're not going so much on the leadership path. They're not going so much on the spiritual path. They're just waking up from the inside out and it's becoming integrated in a way that is very natural and that they won't have as many ego deaths. They won't have as many ups and downs. And that's, they're fe like my human is feeling like frustration. Of like, what are you talking about? And they're like, you chose to be that archetype of a leader. You chose to want to go through it in a very human way. Others chose to go through it in different ways. It was an active choice as to what generation to be in, what um, quantum jump to make, how it would happen, where it would happen. And we all chose that specific timeline. So there's no judgment. Everyone is playing their part. Everyone's playing their role very, very specifically. There are highlighting, I have a downloadable uh, generational quests as well as the uh, video that I posted last week that's for free on my YouTube, the reverence for the villain. Look at the archetypes that you are. I'm having a full body chill. Look at the archetype that you actually identify as. And are you, and look at it as the tarot, look at it as the, you know, the king, queen, the court jester, the page, the maiden, the um, divine feminine, the mystic. Like think of which archetype you are in the new world. What role you play what role you play and she's saying don't get caught up in the, the the gender hullabaloo and things like that's not what we're saying we're going through all of that this is in no way talking about the changes that are going on more politically or more socially in the here and now they she wants you to be a part of like the more magical mystical piscean world and really look as if you're reading a fairy tale Which is saying, especially for the corporate people, especially for the people that they like, she needs, she is expressing that it'd be advantageous to look at things in a more magical way and go back to your childhood days and think of like, what did you want to be back then? What, what magical ideas, what things did you see back then when you were a child, when you believed in magic? Try to have a way that you believe in magic again and experience things in a way that feel more. Uh, new world what does that mean to you there's no right there's no wrong and the more you look at it and just kind of take a 60 to 90 seconds a day and look at that and just take yourself out of that moment 
She's like, it's not even about gratitude. It's not even about manifestation. It's not even about, it's a new vibration of a law. It's a new law of vibration that we're experiencing and integrating onto this planet where the consciousness is, we came to experience itself. And so everything, the manifestations, and she's putting them in quotations. She's putting these words as clickbaity words into, into quotations because there has been a, a, a the powers that be, whatever that may be, whatever that may be for you, do know this language. And that is the reason that, that humans were so smashed down, is because those powers that be, they understand the secret, they understand all of this. This isn't new information, it's a reminder. This is a reminder for who you really are. And she's saying the reason that it's not priestess or goddess is because women back then where she is, not even back then, but now, and were revered as so precious and ancient and, and there was no needing to harden. There was no needing to, you know, I, I need to be physically strong. I need to be mentally strong. It was just nurtured and nourishing and that they would get downloads regularly. Now she's saying that as in this lifetime, she was no different than any of the other women around her. Everyone revered women. Everyone revered the flow and the cycles and would talk to the moon, would talk to the ancients, would talk to the ancestors. And they knew that, you know, in certain times of the cycle, you literally could see into the beyond and could see different things. And that was the most precious of all the ancient oracles, that women are the oracles. They're meant to be kept so safe and in towers and and by protected by the men. She's showing me there's so much of the tear of that, how do I say, that divine partnerships were separated. And it's now she's showing me a little bit of the, the break, the separation as to why things had to go to the lower timeline. And she's showing me the divine masculine, divine feminine did, they, there was a, the, a choice was made. This is very Atlantean, very Lemurian, very, very ancient. And that there were choices that were made that each divine pairing of men and women said, I will go this way, you will go this way, and we will find each other. The men will find their women again. And they chose to go down so far into the abyss to crawl back up again. And they didn't recognize that there would be so many boys that needed so much help. And it's hard for the women right now, and even in a very 3D world, a 3D way where the men, women are waiting for their divine masculine to find them, it's the, the attack on the divine masculine was so specific. And it was, it was such a heavy hitter. It was never meant to get this dark. It was never meant to get this scary and this separated and the, this prolonged. I'm asking if it was never meant to get this dark and but we're still in the most authentic timeline then why did it happen if it was never if, the, if this is still the highest timeline she's showing me that there will be a big pop the big light the big solar flare the big thing that will change so many things and that the people that have chosen to not do this work the people that still gossip the people that still speak negative spells into existence it's such an active choice and so to revere them, to revere them, it's the little image that she's giving is, you know, when you're jumping on a trampoline, you can jump up, but then when people hold it down, you can jump really high. So have reverence for the people that are staying in the density because they are choosing to catapult the light. Their souls knew what to do, but they're, hum oh my gosh, it's so quantum. It's like as if they know what to do and they have to stay in that stubbornness It's so, it's like to revere the most dense, the most stubborn, the most 3D person in your life, to really have reverence for them because their souls are so ancient and they're almost like staying in that way on purpose to help catapult. It's, I don't understand that as a leader. I'm like, how can you not? How can you not? But it's actually giving us the, the tools that we need. 
Yeah, the densest people in your life, in your family line, in your family are actually energetically giving you more tools to do what it is that you need to do as the woo-woo. So if you're the woo-woo of the group, of the line, of the uh, archetypal, you know, new world group, just say thank you. Really say thank you for the densest, most verbally abusive, most narcissistic, most issue-based drug addict in the family. Like really express gratitude for them and do not pity. Just to say thank you, I accept. Thank you, I accept. There's so many as alchemists, we understand that energy can be alchemized at any time. So there's no ill intention. If someone is thinking ill of you, if someone is trying to send you negativity, that's literally them creating more dense karma for themselves, but nothing can hit you negatively. Every time someone thinks something negative of you, you prosper. I'm asking what other messages she has. What else is it that she... Writing things down and as ideas come, as dreams come, as certain things come, and really taking videos of yourself and talking about things in a, like, what's the most woo-woo thing that has happened to me today? Everyone is experiencing and even look back to 2021. She's saying like October 17, October 25th, 2021, around that time. She's saying, look at how far you've come from that time into who you are now and what you accept and expect as woo-woo and how you've integrated certain things. Like, look at how far you've come already and it didn't make sense then. It was just integrated that they're even showing like watching Sarah whomever is watching Sarah right now that has never watched me before they're saying how is it that you can see this person channeling and that you're listening and you can't peel your eyes away but even a few years ago you wouldn't even you would have scrolled past something that said quantum you would have not even listened to your intuition to see something that's happening here saying you have to pick something to stand for that fires you up but not to get lost in the fire we are you know the she's showing me like when we can walk over the coals certain people can walk over the coals of certain issues and certain people cannot and will get engulfed in certain issues so pick your not poison but pick your thing to stand for and to focus on as to clearing it out and visualize it as if there is a fire and that you pour cool water on it and let it be so specific and so niche to use the words of right now that that's all you need to focus on and stand for i'm asking for examples like homeschooling ascension food air water all different things that have been manipulated and smashed down pick one thing to stand for and let everything else be someone else's responsibility and you do not have to start a youtube you do not have to create something and stand on the soapbox but you just have to stand for it in your day in your daily life say i don't participate in that that's not for me this i don't believe in that this is what I stand for. This is who I am. And it's just birthing that vibrationally. She's seeing all of you scared and she's seeing like if you feel as though you're just like, it's too much, it's too much, it's too much. Just pray to the world, to the earth. Go to the earth and to the water and to your garden and plant seeds. the light, the gems, it's, it will be a simpler time that things will make sense. She's just showing me the whole world in this like collective reshifting and reshuffling and it's just very confusing but we can't see fully the clear view because it's just ever shifting and ever growing and ever changing. But as the tides turn, as the tide goes out, as the tides settle, it will make sense one day. (sighs) 
showing me the book Fahrenheit 451 and saying not to harden so much and to desensitize in that way, but to find reverence in each moment and go very sacred and go very monk-like, very priest-like, very, but like not in the bad way, but just revere every soul and revere every person and revere every ancient that is leaving the planet, revere every ancient that is staying hard. Yeah, the, the, the light that comes, not everyone chooses, but the ones that are most ancient stay to show others to, to lift others up. There's a few videos that I've recorded that I'm going to put the link to that she's just showing me a few of them that um, could be helpful and to to watch it with your ears and to let your senses change and go to your most the strongest sense and the weakest sense yeah pick two the strongest sense you have and the weakest sense that you have and try to blend them together and what if you labeled the weakest sense as the strongest sense and the strongest sense as the weakest sense and try to blend them two in the infinity symbol saying we're all being crowned by our ancestors, by our spirit team, by our soul team, by our star family. We're all being called home to bridge that same gap in a way that that's why people are leaving so quickly, the planet, leaving the planet so quickly, is because they're connecting to their soul family in a way that is needed for the ascension, but their souls don't leave. Everyone is still helping that doesn't take away from the human feeling of it. Our humans are very sensitive right now. We're very exposed, we're very sensitive. Each day, layers of the old is falling away. The ones that are doing the work cognitively are doing so much work for the others that are not doing it cognitively, but everyone is feeling it. So we're all little, like the snake skin has been poured off and we're this new, very sensitive, new soft skin beings and some are aware and some are not, but it's happening to everyone. Please take some deep breaths. That was a lot in an unexpected channel. She's really showing me putting like crystals on, you know, our third eye, on certain chakras that we needed them. So just know that your soul family was there. And I'll put a little disclaimer in the description just to say this is a big activation video. I did not expect to be that in trance for that long. So I'm just so grateful. I love you. Thank you so much for being here. That's so much fun. I love what I get to do. I love channeling and I love real, like that's, <sighs> since it's been a few weeks now, since I think I had told everyone that I had you know, like a big like eye detox that had happened and just being able to channel and just talk to my guides in these capacities. My growth is happening exponentially and so I'm so keen to share it with all of you. If you're interested in a quantum healing session, a one-on-one -on -one session, please email directly. The email is in the description in my about section. Please go over to my website for more information wherever wherever in the community section. I think I put the menu up so definitely go check that out. Is a post in the community section, so go check that out. That has all my services that I have available, and I'll put the links for all of the videos that she had showed me in the description. So, yeah, so cool to be alive.
please comment below what was that like for you what did you take away from that and how did that feel physically was there anything going on for you as you were watching what what experience did you have i'm so interested to hear